everybody, I hope you're doing well, and thank you all for checking out this video. Today, I want to do a very special video for Father's Day, because we know that whether you are a father, uh, whether you're going to be a father, or whether you have a father, it's a pretty tough job. And fathers across the country, uh, hopefully they get at least this one day to get a little something back from the kids, or from the wife, or even really anybody who looks up to them. So today I want to talk about what are the five best whiskeys that could be gifted that would make a great present for dad on Father's Day. Because I know there's a lot of folks out there looking for gifts for dad and um, that can always sometimes be difficult. Now this list of course is not all encompassing, but I think that I have chosen five whiskeys and bourbons uh, that will work for dad who maybe doesn't drink that much whiskey or all the way up to a dad who loves whiskey and bourbon and secretly has been hoping that somebody one of his children will get him something good someday so if you're watching this uh, before father's day there is still time to get some of these bottles if it's father's day already uh you know it's never too late to pick up one of these bottles and if it's past father's day well it's never too soon uh, to start looking for some of these hard to find bottles or you know what I mean, really, it doesn't even need to be Father's Day. Just pick one up and share it with your dad. I guarantee he will love the time he gets to spend with you and enjoy the whiskey. Now, before I get started, of course, I just want to say thank you all to all of you who are spending your valuable time watching these videos. It's great to have you part of this small but growing whiskey channel. And don't forget, if you do like these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when my newest videos get put out. So... Thanks again, and let's get down to it. All right, so right now, you may be thinking to yourself, man, I need to get something for Dad for Father's Day. And he's got all the ties and socks and hand tools he could ever really need. Um, so what should I get him? Now, the obvious solution, at least in my book, is whiskey or bourbon. Of course, that is if it's appropriate. But if he's open to it, uh, there are so many great whiskeys and bourbons, especially right now, that could brighten up your dad's Father's Day and just days to come. And you can also enjoy it in drips and drops uh, throughout the rest of the year. So the first bourbon that I'm going to recommend is the one that is probably the least expensive on this list, but it's probably one of the best, at least dollar for dollar in my opinion. This number one whiskey for Father's Day is the E.H. Taylor Jr. Small Batch. Now, even if your dad has been drinking things like Jim Beam or Johnny Walker or Jack Daniels all his life, the E.H. Taylor is a nice step up in quality from those other ones. Now, there's of course nothing wrong with those other ones. Those are great and, you know, I like them as well at their appropriate time. But the E.H. Taylor is something special. Also, it may get him to kind of up his whiskey game a bit and indulge in some of the uh, best reasonably priced bourbons that uh, are around that you can find. So the E.H. Taylor is a subsidiary of Buffalo Trace Distillery, so they make, obviously, Buffalo Trace whiskey, as well as other standard lines of whiskeys like their Eagle Rare. Um, and it's got kind of a cool, old-timey feel to it, as you can see, and it's named after a man named Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor Jr., E.H. Taylor Jr., uh, who spent most of his life with his uncle uh, and general, and actually eventually president, Zachary Taylor. Now, Colonel Taylor acquired his distillery in 1869 and owned it for nine years until one, George T. Stagg, yet another big name in the whiskey world, ended up purchasing it. Also, uh, by the way, he is related to President James Madison. So basically, needless to say, E.H. Taylor is basically the whiskey equivalent of Forrest Gump. He's always sort of in the right place at the right time for important parts of history. Uh, there are some really great things about this whiskey and one <laughs> really horrible thing about it. Uh, but let's go over the great stuff first. First is that um, the price is very reasonable if you can get it at MSRP. So I just bought this one maybe two weeks ago from Total Wine uh, for $44.99, which is a very reasonable price for it. The ABV on it is at 50%. It's bottled and bonded, so it has a bit of a kick to it. But the flavors are where it really stands out. It has a uniquely dusty corn, brown sugar, raw grain, and spice flavor to it that sort of exudes masculine and calming fatherly flavors, <laughs> if that's a thing. Um, that makes, of course, this very pleasant. Now, the review scores on it are pretty good at 86.75 points, which I also think is a bit low, but there is a significant reason why. And here is where I come to the downside. Uh, it is uh, pretty difficult to get. It's very difficult to get, in fact. And by that I mean that it is shipped out in reasonable quantities around the country. But for those who love it, they love it. 
And also because uh, of its popularity and ridiculous second-hand prices that are it's going for, if you go to a liquor store or if you buy it from uh, online, uh, what it basically comes down to is you have to be the first person in line to get it or know somebody's willing to save one for you when it comes in or know when they're coming in and just kind of camp out like uh, you're trying to get concert tickets or something or an iPhone, <laughs> I guess, a modern version of that. So E.H. Taylor basically has been a victim of its own success and of the massive increase, including me in that, uh, interest in the higher end bourbon market in the U.S. So it's a great whiskey if you can find it at the price $44, maybe even up to $60. But when it starts getting into the $150, $200, then um, there's definitely better whiskeys that you can find that are more available for that price. Now, the next whiskey, uh, so the, I guess that would be the number two whiskey that I'm going to recommend for this Father's Day, is a whiskey that is relatively new to the market. It is out of Ireland. Uh, this is the Blue Spot Whiskey. Now, the Blue Spot is in the same family as the other Color Spot whiskeys from the Middleton Distillery. So that is the Green Spot, which is 10 years old, uh, the Yellow Spot, which is 12 years old, and the Red Spot, which is 15 years old. But this Blue Spot is actually a lot younger and a lot stronger than the others that are in the category or in the in the family. Now the Blue Spot is really only seven years old and the wife and I, we actually picked some of this up earlier this year and tried it and it was amazing, really, truly amazing. It was something that we both thoroughly enjoyed and I think it'd be a great pick for dad um, that is maybe a dad who is probably like a regular whiskey drinker uh, maybe more of a Scotch and Irish whiskey drinker than a bourbon guy. Or perhaps, you know, he's like me, who's a whiskey omnivore uh, and is willing to enjoy whiskeys uh, kind of from all different directions and all different levels. Uh, it is a bit more expensive than the H. Taylor, but it has the advantage of not being as well known. So it may not win you any brownie points uh, in a whiskey beauty contest or at first glance. But once your dad tries it, it's something that will really be enjoyable. So like I said, it's from Ireland, it's aged seven years, it's cast strength, which means that it is a lot stronger than most of the other Irish whiskeys that you'll find out there uh, on the shelf, and it has a great spice, or like a sting on the back end. Uh, it's bottled by Mitchells and Son out of Ireland, who have over the years been known for picking out great whiskeys and making them their own. Now, the price on this one, I believe, I also got it at Total Wine and uh, more, that's Total Wine <laughs> and more. I like Bed Bath and Beyond and more <laughs> about three months ago. Uh, and that was for $109.99, not including tax. The ABV on it is at 58.7%, uh, so it's got a nice kick to it. And the tasting notes mention things like orange zest, honey, bitters, caramel, and a touch of chocolate with a bit of spice, which I think is all pretty good and a fair assessment of how the flavors actually are. The compiled review scores that I could find rated at 90.4%. Four out of 100 points, which also is very good, but I actually think it's still a little low. I would probably put it at 95, me personally, but uh, that's just me. Uh, and uh, I think that if your dad is a Scotch or an Irish whiskey drinker, he may not really have ever heard of the Blue Spot before because it's relatively new, but once he does try it, he will probably bring it up in every conversation that you have for the next year or so, at least once uh, if, you know, if you're talking to him on the phone or visiting. Something like, hey, buddy, uh, if you can find any more of that Blue Spot, uh, why don't you pick some up for me? So I think this is another great one for, for Dad. Now, the third whiskey that I'm going to recommend is another one of my favorites. And it's the first allocated whiskey that I ever picked up from Costco, uh, even if it was by accident. And that is the Woodford Reserve Master Collection. And this one's at 119.8 proof. Now, this is a go-to favorite of mine to drink maybe at the end of the night or if there's something special going on in life. So you just maybe have one. You don't drink a lot of it at once. Um, but first things first, uh, it is the highest proof whiskey on the list. So it would be ideal if your dad likes the kind of whiskey <laughs> that you could light on fire <laughs> if you ever really needed to. Now, that doesn't mean it's devoid of taste, of course. Uh, in fact, it's the exact opposite. But needless to say, if he is not a fire breather, this may not be the best whiskey for him. Now, the Woodford Reserve Master Collection, this one proofed at 119.8, comes out every single year. And each year it comes out, it uh, has a different strength. So, um, you know, you can actually define which year they are by the proof on it. Yeah, it just kind of depends on the batch. So in later years, it has proofs as high as 128 or maybe even a little bit higher. But this one, I think, is either 2019, 20 or 2020 or maybe even 2021. Uh, at least when I picked it up, it was 2021. And I just got it at Costco. 
It is also a great whiskey if he is not just a drinker of whiskey, but yet also a collector of whiskey because it's uh, unique to the year that it comes out. They don't produce a ton of it, but it still comes out of a well-known whiskey house like Woodford Reserve. Also, if he normally enjoys Woodford, it could be something that he could have a drink off when he wants to stay in the Woodford family, but try something that's a little bit more upscale than like kind of that standard Woodford uh, Reserve, which is also good. Now, the price that I got uh, at this one was somewhere around $109 back in Costco in 2021, but I have seen newer versions coming out around 130 I guess, inflation and stuff, uh, depending on where you can find it. Um, the ABV on this one specifically is at 59.9%, so that is what makes the proof come out to 1198 uh, proof and for bourbon drinking dads uh, I think this would be a great treat uh, the tasting notes on it do mention big bold flavors that you know bourbon drinkers love like maple notes tobacco root beer candies like the one you used to get at the claim jumpers uh, creamy vanilla beans and a dirty cherry flavor that's my favorite now the overall uh, review scores gave it 85.5 points which is pretty good considering the minimum amount of bottles that do eventually get shipped out and the even fewer bottles that actually get drunk. Um, so you know how many people review it is it's got to be just a handful. But anyway again this would be another whiskey that is allocated so it's not going to be the easiest to get it's more of a timing issue than it is of a uh, you know fighting someone off for it like uh, what was it? Uh, Tickle Me Elmo from the 1990s. So it's not like that. It's just a matter of finding it and being in the right place at the right time. Uh, but if you can get it, uh, it'd be something that your dad would love to have part of his whiskey collection, part of his bar, maybe bring out when his buddies or friends come over, uh, or just something special for himself. All right, so moving right along, uh, the next whiskey that I want to do, and I guess this would be uh, whiskey number four, is this whiskey from Japan called Yamazaki 12. Now, this is whiskey that just sort of hit the West Coast this last weekend, uh, conveniently in time and suspiciously in time for Father's Day, but it gets bought up super duper quick. So I'd say that out of the five bottles that we're talking about, the ones that are best for Father's Day, this was probably the hardest one to get because it disappears almost instantly uh, when it hits the shelf, like, uh, like water on a hot frying pan. <laughs> In fact, in Costco in Danville, uh, that's up in uh, Northern California, just this last week, I got a chance to talk to the uh, Costco liquor manager there. He said he had 55 bottles of the Yamazaki 12, uh, which is basically a pallet that disappeared in an hour and 45 minutes. So when people find out that it's there, they come a running and it, uh, it's hard to get. So finding it is pretty rough and mostly, <laughs> mostly gonna be luck. Uh, like I, I actually got pretty lucky, but if you can get it, um, it is a real treat for dad who, uh, you know, who enjoys Japanese style whiskey. This means that they are tuned into the lighter, more nuanced flavors and palate that Japanese whiskeys are really best known for. They're not these kind of hard hitting in your face style bourbons that American whiskey drinkers love or bourbon drinkers we call them. Um, but rather they are more of an understated light floral and sweet flavor with very little smoke to them. But again, if your dad is a Japanese whiskey a a connoisseur, or maybe he has a lighter palate and just enjoys not super intense flavors, uh, this is a great whiskey for him, the Yamazaki 12. Now, one of the best things about the Yamazaki 12, y'all, is that it is a true Japanese whiskey. Uh, and that sounds kind of obvious, but there are many whiskeys, especially right now, that are being quote unquote produced from Japan and are, I mean, are uh, uh, Japanese whiskeys, but basically are nothing more than whiskeys that are stored in Japan and then distilled maybe in uh, Scotland and then shipped into Japan. They store them there and presto changeo, now they're quote unquote Japanese whiskeys. But this Yamazaki 12 is actually distilled, stored and bottled and produced in Japan, soup to nuts. And the quality and the flavors are what is left to show for. It. It's kind of that high quality flavor to it. The second best thing about it is that it is actually has an age statement on it. So uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but uh, you know, it's the Yamazaki 12, so it has a 12 year uh, age statement on it. And that just means that the whiskey in it can't be any younger than 12 years. It can be older, but it can't be any younger. Uh, this is becoming less and less common for Japanese whiskeys as the demand for Japanese whiskey has been so high that producers like uh, Suntory and Hibiki and Nika especially have had to mix in younger whiskeys with their older ones to just have enough whiskey to actually sell. Uh, but that means that they can't label it as a 12 year or a 15 year or 17 year or whatever the years are. And so when they do come out with ones that are age statement bottles, they get bought up even faster than normal. Um, and it's really getting 
harder and harder to find these. Uh, so this one specifically, I did buy it at Costco last Friday uh, up in Northern California, but I guess there were some here in Los Angeles as well, uh, for $99.99, which is an amazing price, considering that uh, when you find it in the secondhand market or when you find it at the liquor stores or online, it can be uh, double or even triple the cost that they go for uh, at Costco. So that $9.99.99 is, uh, is, is I think the best you're ever gonna find it at. Now the Aviviana is not that strong, it's at 43%, so if your dad is an enjoyer of lighter strength whiskeys, this is a great option for him. And the tasting notes, again, mention flavors that are on the lighter side. So things like apples, pears, faint melon, buttery pecan, pecan, pecan. And my addition to this, which is I get the taste of mineral rock candy. So if you were making rock candy out of mineral water, now, review scores on it give it uh, 89.75 points out of 100. And, uh, you know, I think, again, that the, the lower score, I would give it at least above a 90 somewhere. But I think the lower score is for a couple reasons. Primarily, that it's really difficult to find, and it's also really super expensive if you do find it. But at the 9.99.99, it's an amazing uh, thing to get. And I think it'd be probably my first choice as a gift for uh, Father's Day. That is, of course, if you can find it. Okay, so now getting to the last and definitely not least best whiskey for Father's Day. This is number five. This is one that I mean, really it doesn't need any introduction. It is sort of a no-brainer. It's a whiskey that if your dad has any knowledge of whiskey at all, he would likely know as well as appreciate, which is this Johnny Walker Blue. It's basically like the whiskey equivalent of the brand Rolex. Now, you may not know anything about watches, but you do know the brand Rolex. Same with Johnny Walker Blue. It's been seen as a key gift-giving whiskey for basically decades at this point, and there's not a high-end lounge, an airport duty-free store, or a five-star hotel in the world that doesn't have at least a few bottles of this Johnny Walker Blue sitting behind the bar. Now, I mention this because uh, the whiskey is reasonably good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. But the image of getting a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue in its little case and its gold and blue is something that nobody forgets. So this is a great gift for Dad. Um, if he's really not a whiskey drinker, he enjoys it, but it's not something that he's, uh, you know, a deep diver into, and neither are you. <laughs> but it's a, a whiskey that just looks great when you get it, and he will be ecstatic to get it. It's something that he can tell his friends he got and share without uh, the guilt of knowing that only a hundred of them exist in the world, and if you drink one of them, then there's only 99 left. Also looks good on a, on a fireplace or kind of behind a bar. It's, it's a great presentation piece as well. So there's Johnny Walker Blue. I think uh, I got it a while ago, but you can find them right now uh, by the pallet load uh, at Costco at $169 per bottle. That's pre-tax, of course. And they come in pallets. So, uh, you know, they're not hard to get. The, the Avion is at 40%. Uh, so it will have little or basically no alcohol burn or harshness to it. And the flavors are smooth and delightful and, uh, you know, don't really require a finely honed whiskey palette to enjoy. Uh, I guess, you know, it would also be comparable to like Dom Perignon, right? If you were going to give someone a bottle of Dom Perignon, they may not be champagne drinkers, but they know Dom Perignon is a nice bottle of whiskey. It's readily available and the flavors are enjoyable. It's kind of right down the center. So uh, now the flavors on the Johnny Walker Blue uh, are apples, pears, vanilla, mild cream and no burn. Now, the reviews on the Johnny Walker Blue give it 86.8 points out of 100, but again, I do believe these uh, this one should also be higher. Uh, and I think it's primarily because the people who review these things are these professional or pro-am style whiskey drinkers um, who, uh, you know, I think they turn their nose up at the Johnny Walker Blue because of its ubiquity and because of its centerline taste. But, you know, I, I, so I think it should be higher, but you know what, as a gift for Father's Day, there's probably no more iconic whiskey than this Johnny Walker Blue in its nice little box, uh, hands down. So, you know what? The reviewers, they can be damned. <laughs> All right, so that's it for today's. Uh, the five best whiskeys for dad on Father's Day as gifts. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that way you can get updates when my newest videos get put up. Also remember, if you do see a whiskey that you love, or if your dad loves, just buy it because if you don't somebody else surely will and it might even be me all right so that's it happy father's day i'm out and adios